Good morning, boys and girls. Yesterday, Landon shared his stuffed animal, if you remember, and it was a Peter Rabbit. So I told you that I would read the story called The Tale of Peter Rabbit because everybody needs to know the story of Peter Rabbit. Now, if you remember, Landon's stuffed animal had a blue jacket. And as you can see, Peter Rabbit wears a blue little jacket. The author's name is Beatrix Potter. She wrote these stories a long, long time ago. And sometimes you can even find them in these cute little books. Tale of Peter Rabbit. And then you can see the author's name right here. Beatrix Potter. And she has written many stories about these little bunnies. Here's the next one called The Tale of Benjamin Bunny. So maybe we'll have time to read a few more stories as the weeks go by. But today is the day we are going to hear about Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank beneath the root of a very big fir tree. So those little bunnies live underneath a big fir tree. Now, my dears, said Mrs. Rabbit, one morning you may go into the fields or down to the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. So she gave some directions to her bunnies about where they may go and where they should not go. Then Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went along the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. There she is, shopping. Flopsy Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Uh-oh. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. I guess parsley makes your tummy feel better, and he ate so much, he needed something to feel better. Around the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor, on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. Oh, no. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe among the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I, I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not, unfortunately, ran into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost, and he shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows, who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Hmm, I wonder what it means to implore, and I wonder what it means to exert yourself. I think implore means they encouraged him and kept telling him to try harder, try harder. And exert yourself means you give it all you got. So they're really trying to encourage Peter to try to get out of that net. Oh, let's see what happened. Did he get out? Oh, 
It looks like he did. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop right on top of Peter. But Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him, and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. So as you can see, he wiggled out of his little jacket and the jacket is still stuck in the gooseberry net, but he got out just in time before Mr. McGregor could cover him up with that sieve. Hopped in the watering can, but it had water in it. Oh boy, his ears are showing. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden beneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Got you! Oh, Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out the window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Yay! I think Peter's going to be okay. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright. He had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in the can. After a time, he began to wonder about going lippity, lippity, not very fast, looking all around. Hmm. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep carrying peas and beans to her family in the woods. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Oh dear, poor Peter. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden. But he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled watering cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. Oh yeah, there's goldfish in that pond. But now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if she were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. Ooh, this is a good picture. You can see the whole garden. You can see Mr. McGregor working, and there's Peter. Oh, look at it. You can see the gate, too. You see the gate? Looks like that's where Peter needs to get to. Hmm. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, scratch. Peter scurried underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was a gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along a straight walk. Behind some black currant bushes, Mr. McGregor caught sight of him, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate, and he was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. 
cold look at him. He's so relieved, isn't he? He got away from Mr. McGregor. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten away the blackbirds. He did lose those in the garden. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. Hmm, it was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave him a dose. She gave a dose to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. Because we know that they were good little bunnies. But I don't know about Peter. He was a little bit naughty, wasn't he? Okay, I hope you like that story in Landon. I hope that you enjoy your Peter Rabbit even more.